I'm Kevin O'Hara for alcoholmastery.com. Today's topic is about learning a healthy dislike for alcohol, right? Um, healthy uh, hatred for alcohol, but also for the alcohol culture that surrounds it, right? You know, if we drank alcohol in isolation and nobody else drank it, um, it would be easy to quit drinking because you're not getting any motivation from outside of yourself. You're not getting any, any people who are trying to convince you that you're wrong and they're right. What they're doing to themselves is what everyone does to themselves and there's no harm in it, right? This is not the problem, unfortunately. The problem is that for most people, the alcohol culture is um, the thing that drives it. When I was quitting drinking, uh, smoking, I tried to quit smoking a hundred times, right? Easy. And every time I went back on it, most of the times um, I went back on the booze was something to do with alcohol, right? And at the time, um, it was because alcohol was, uh, you know, when I went into a pub, people used to smoke in the pub. So as I've spoken about before, when you take a drug, like alcohol, it lowers your inhibitions. With that inhibitions, it lowers your willpower. Um, and once your willpower is lowered, you know, it's very easy for you to go, ah, fuck it, you know, tomorrow, I'll quit tomorrow, I'll just have the one, you know. I used to go into the pub and after a couple of beers, I convinced myself that smoking cigars wasn't really smoking, you know. But, it wasn't smoking cigarettes, fair enough, you know, but, you know, as soon as I got that in my brain that it wasn't one part of smoking, it, you know, couldn't be any other ones, you know. And, you know, I convinced myself that I wasn't inhaling, a bit like Bill Clinton, which I was, you know, and Jesus, smoking cigars and inhaling cigar smoke is something rotten. You know, it's just not right at all. But, um... That soon finished when they banned smoking. I mean, Ireland was one of the first places that banned smoking from pubs, so you had to go outside. And I don't know if you've ever been a smoker, if you've ever quit smoking. I mean, I, I still, to this day, I don't mind the smell of cigarette smoke when it comes off the cigarette, but as soon as it comes off a person, you know, when you smell it on their mouth, or when you smell an ashtray, or when you smell it on their clothes, it's not that nice, you know? So. It was a lot easier to be able to go out and have a drink and not smoke. So quitting drinking was a different ball game altogether because um, you just avoid the pubs. You don't go into the pubs anymore because you've no reason to go in there. Or I'd go in for the match, but it would be under different circumstances. And it wasn't, for me, it wasn't the same sort of a temptation to drink as it would have been when somebody was sat beside me smoking a cigarette, you know, and um, I was gagging for a cigarette. It wasn't that type of temptation. Uh, so, but it's the widespread alcohol advertising that is the most insidious. You know, you see people, you see billboards everywhere. You see advertisements on the TV. You see uh, marketing placements in um, movies and, TV series and it's everywhere, you know, and people that you look up to are sort of saying, well, this is the brand of alcohol that I take. Um, this is the, and they don't say it like that, they say it in much more smoother um, words and, and sentences than that, but you get the drift, you know, this is what people are, are saying. Oh, I'm back to the cobwebs today. Whew. Now, at the end of the day, alcohol companies don't give a shit, you know. They only give a shit about making money, making their profit. They don't care about you. They don't care about your health. They don't care about your pocket. They don't care whether you're addicted to. Uh, well, they do actually care. I mean, you know, they, they want you to be addicted to their product. The more addicted you are, the less they have to do to convince you to come back and be a repeat customer. Um, you know, these are the real personal weapons of mass destruction. You hear people getting all fucking mad about Saddam Hussein 
and he was hiding his weapons of mass destruction over in the east and what a threat they were to us. The daily threat of weapons of mass destruction is on our own doorstep, lad. Do you know what I mean? These are the things that we are open to every single day of our lives. These are the things we open ourselves up to, you know, that we willingly put into our bodies. This is the thing that you've got to be cognizant of, right? You've got to think about and you've got to be determined to get this out of your, out of your life, out of your system, because if you don't, it's going to kill you. you know, these things will kill you. Alcohol will kill you. Processed foods will kill you. Not only will they kill you, they will bring you back into that other area of mass destruction, the health system. Right, which doesn't care about curing you. you know, they care about keeping the symptoms low by keeping you coming back for more pills and more pills and more pills. You know, I was having this conversation with a guy the other day about dentistry, that if we ate the diet that we were supposed to eat, you know, whole foods, stuff as nature intended, there would be no need for a dentist. You know, but you're never gonna go to a dentist and get nutritional advice, you know. You're never gonna get go to the dentist and he's saying to you, well, you know, don't eat this, don't eat that. You know, you might get an off the cuff comment, but the dentist knows that you're not gonna take any notice of that. If you're addicted to junk food, you know, him saying it to you once, going, well, you shouldn't really be drinking Coca-Cola, you know. Um, you know, it's not as if that's gonna all of a sudden go, Jesus, flash of light, light bulb over the head moment, you know, Eureka, I'm going to leave this office and never more drink Coca-Cola or I'm never going to more going to be eating uh, sweets or I'm never going to be more eating um, peanut butter. I mean, when you look at the amount of products that are out there, products that you wouldn't even think of that have got high corn fructose syrup in them, you know, stuff that really rots your fucking teeth, right? The amount of products that are out there that have got that shit in them, mashed potatoes, as I say, peanut butter, um, meals of all kinds and shapes and sizes, because these companies know that that stuff is fucking addictive, but you're never going to go to a dentist and he, you know, you're never going to get that type of education from a dentist and, you know, in all fairness, when you're talking about education, um, when you're talking about changing people's lives, education comes very low because people know this stuff already. They're not stupid. You know, most people are, you know, we, we're open to advertisements and marketing all over the place, but we're also open to these messages as well, you know, and we know that these things are bad for us, but education doesn't work. You know, it's it works for some people. What works is when the pain is greater than the pleasure. That's what works. So when you can cause somebody more pain than pleasure, then um, it's gonna work, it's gonna change what they do because they don't want the pain, you know? Nobody wants the pain. When you can give somebody more pleasure than, um, than pain, when you can alleviate their pain, for doctors are there for you, know, to alleviate the pain, you go down to a doctor and you don't want to fucking lecture about what you should do in the long term and how this thing is going to turn out in the long term. You want the doctor to give you a pill that stops the symptoms right there and then, you know. And that's what the doctor is only too happy to do for you because he knows then that you'll be back. And, you know, and I'm not trying to disparage doctors and stuff, you know. Without them, we'd be in the right state. But, you know, we're in situations now where, you know, children as young as eight years of age are getting um, adult onset diabetes. And that should tell us a lot about the, the society that we're living in. Adult onset, this is something that used to only happen to adults is now happening to eight-year-old children. You know, they, we, we're having children in hospitals now who are getting amputations because of their diabetes in their 20s. Um, we're getting people who are going into their 30s and they're going blind because of diabetes. You know, there's, there's planning in place now, right, for... Um, that's going to require bigger 
uh, wheelchair access and bigger uh, access for handicapped people in the future because of the diets that we're leading now, right? You know, massive things, you know, give it 20 years time and you see the amount of um, shit that's going to happen out there. And this is what you have to develop a hatred for, you know, that kind of um, society, you know. I mean, the, you know, there's, there's really nothing that we can do personally for it except alter how it affects us, you know. And, I, you know, for me, as soon as I hear now something that's happening in... Um, um, I listen to a marketing message and I hear that kind of stuff, you know, fat-free, oil-free, uh, healthy, all that kind of stuff, you know. I, it just switches on, flicks on a switch for me and I put the shit down, you know. I don't want to know because I know that these people are just trying to fake me into um, buying their product and, you know, they don't give a fuck about whether I ruin my body or not, you know. Don't give a fuck about whether you ruin your body. You know, this is the point. It's not going to be that one glass of alcohol that's going to kill you right it never was you know if you have a glass of alcohol once a month that is not going to kill you what's going to kill you is the society the way we think about alcohol the way we um, purchase alcohol the way we drink alcohol the way manufacturers um, promote alcohol to us all these things the constant barrage of fucking shit that we get tossed at us every single day of the year that's the thing that's going to kill you you know so you have to develop a dislike and open your eyes to what this you know to to all forms of this in in our society you know don't allow it to get into your head and fucking ruin your life that's it for today look if you uh have any comments about this leave a comment down below until next time stay safe keep the alcohol out of your mouth you know open your mind to this kind of crap listen to what you're being told and question everything you know it's only by questioning this shit that you're ever going to learn about yourself that you're ever going to be able to defeat it is by looking at labels looking at advertisements and you know saying really you know Really? Are you really trying to tell me that by drinking alcohol I'm going to be a sex symbol? Really? It's not going to happen. No. I'm Kevin O'Hara for Alcohol Mastery. Onwards and upwards.